this live martial arts follow along class, we're talking about how to defend yourself with a walking cane. And I was gonna use this one to start. This is the one I keep bragging on, nine bucks, free shipping on Amazon. There's a link below. I still think it's a great cane. I have to be honest, I probably hit this now against everything I can, and I finally broke it. So we're not using this one today. See there, it's done. The good news is, now you can stab somebody for self-defense if you need to. But we're gonna throw this out of the way. We're going back to my practice cane. You can also see a link to these down below in the martial arts store. They sell these and this is made out of rattan. And I have hit this way more than that one. I've never broken this one. So we're going back to this one. I'm gonna keep searching. I might get one made out of some kind of polymer that I know is not gonna break so that we can train with that. I like this just as good as the other one. I like using the other one because I keep telling you, go get one, it's cheap. But maybe once you get started, you use that as a training cane and you spend a couple bucks more. They're never that expensive. Unless you get some weird one with like an eagle eye and it's got like a knife coming out of it or something. I know some of you have those, no judgment. Those are kind of cool. But this is your warm up. We're gonna warm up. We're gonna strengthen our chest, our arms, our body, our core, so we can strike hard with both the cane and if we lose the cane, if the cane breaks in a fight, that's good. The cane broke in practice. If it breaks in a fight, now we're talking about hand to hand. Because what are you gonna do? You dropped your cane, you broke the cane, just put your hands down and let them whip on you? No way, right? You're still gonna fight. You're gonna live to fight another day. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. We're warming up here, stomach up and in, abs tight. Remember, this is gonna help you get that proprioception, that good feel for when you need to get in that protective position and go from here to here. It's gonna slide in so easy because of this. This also engages the core here. I've said this many times, you can do all these exercises standing and sitting. Whether you're sitting in a wheelchair, sitting on a bench, sitting in a comfortable chair, if you have to sit, or if you're sitting on the train, on the park bench, of course, you're not gonna be spinning. You're gonna be striking and fighting for self-defense. But the point is, they work standing or sitting. They're mostly upper body. So we're working this, uh, this spin. Lost my train of thought. Going back and forth, I got all excited, thinking someone's coming up to me and I need to defend myself. And I put my stick between me and them and I say, back up. I have every right to defend myself. And then I defend myself using this long stick, one of the best martial arts weapons for self-defense because it can go everywhere you go. You can go to church with you. Sunday. It could go to the beach. I'm here on Sunday. I would be at the beach with the kids, but they closed the beach. Closed the beach for the virus. The numbers are going up. They're skyrocketing. The tests are going up. I don't know. Don't get me started, right? I want to get you started. I'm not political about it. I'm just tired of it. You're probably tired of it too. Let me change the subject. All right, so we're squeezing the abs tightly. We're warming up. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds, cross and back. Let me show you what I'm doing. I'm just pulling and pushing. And I loosen my grip, but I don't open my hand. This is an open hand, this is a loose grip. So you let it twist. And then when you go side to side, you're just pushing your hand down and pulling it back. Down and back, down and back, and then the other hand, 30 seconds here, 30 seconds side to side, pull your stomach up and in, abs tight, always keep that other hand up. Imagine that you're defending yourself and you don't want them to smash you in the head. Anytime you get hit in the head, you have a chance of going unconscious, you hit the ground, they ground and pound, you crush your skull, it's over. So we're talking self-defense, always fight in this position, striking, this hand is always up. You can have it open, you can have it closed, your choice, but get it up. So we go back and forth. And now I wanna do a set that strengthens the legs and helps you improve your mobility, just your ability to move around. Put it here on the floor, like Charlie Chaplin. You might not know who that, or know who that is, but he used to carry a cane, go down and up. This is just an assisted squat. You assist with your hands. And you'll feel, if you're getting a little bit older, you haven't done squats in a while, your knees are normally a little tender when you do that. This takes away all of that. And now you can do squats better. 
your legs start to get stronger, your body leans out faster, you break a sweat quicker, all of the strikes, whether it's the hands or with this weapon in your hand, everything comes off the floor, which means you have to have good footing, feet under your body, you have to have strong legs, a strong foundation when you're standing and striking. You also need a strong core if you're sitting in a chair, park bench, you can still effectively defeat the bad guy, effectively defend yourself with a strong core. And so if you can, up and down here, and don't count, go for 30 seconds. We want time under tension. You're gonna get younger faster, you're gonna get more mobile faster. When you time under tension, you forget about how many, don't think 10 sets of 10 sets of 20, go for 30 seconds to two minutes. Then grab a band if you have it. If you don't have a band, don't grab it. Put it like this, the cane goes in front of your body. I'm left-handed, so I usually grab it on the left. But it goes in front of you, the cane stays in front of your body. You're gonna wanna do this, but don't do it. Keep it in front of your body, reach it around. Just reach your other hand behind you. Grab the other end of that band, and you're gonna put the other end of the band over the other end of the cane. And you want your arms inside the cane. Now your arms can come to the outside of the cane. This is also okay, right? But keep the cane or the band on your back. See that? Nothing fancy there. So you'll be outside or inside your choice. Inside, you're gonna have better form and you're gonna have less pressure on your shoulders if you have weak shoulders. Outside, you can build a harder strike, a harder punch. Maybe you just wanna play around. Sometimes inside, sometimes outside. Now from here, squeeze your stomach up and in. Good footing, or if you're sitting, sit up tall. Push slowly all the way out, slowly in, two. And again, we're going for time under tension. I'm not gonna stop here. I'm not gonna stop out, but I'm gonna fully extend, bring it in, bring it out. And the only reason you're doing this, the only purpose, is so that when you do start to defend yourself for real, you can defe defeat the opponent, you can smash him in the face, you can knock him out, you can end the fight faster when you're stronger. That's the only reason you're gonna do this. It'll also lean you out, make you look stronger, give you more uh, effective strikes, but you're going for 30 seconds, all the way out and all the way back. And this is gonna hurt a little bit, right? One, two, out, in, out. After 30 seconds, you can take that off and rest. Let's do a set of the beginning. We already warmed up with the spins, right? We're not going all the way back to the beginning, but we're gonna do a set of those squats, assisted squats. And again, the only reason you're doing assisted squats is to get stronger legs, so that when you do defend yourself and fight, you gotta move around, you gotta hit as hard as you possibly can, trying to stop the fight, trying to stop the fight. Your legs are conditioned to do that. Now, you don't have to be athletic, you don't have to be young, you don't have to be super fit, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. You just have to have a little bit stronger foundation. And if you can do this, do it. If you've got bad knees, this takes the pain out. If you have bad back, it takes the pain out. It allows you to go up and down because now you're assisting with your arms, your whole body gets stronger, you get leaner, you become fighting fit. You wanna be fighting fit, this is the secret. All the leg work gets rid of the body fat much faster. 30 seconds here, go back to another set here. See, that's all that is. I just put it on one side of my cane. Cane stays in front of your chest. Reach behind with the other hand. Bring the other loop on the cane. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It doesn't have to be flat. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get done. Then from here, slow, out and in. You're going 30 seconds again, nonstop. You're not gonna lock it out and hold it. Don't let it rest on the chest and take the pressure off. You wanna keep your whole muscle, all the muscles under tension. This is, and if you're older, this is the secret to getting stronger faster. You don't have to lift heavy weights in the gym. You don't need a certain machine. You just need to get a little tension on the muscle. It's a very safe, easy way to do it, but it pays off big. You're gonna get so much stronger, so much faster. 30 seconds there, take that off. And we're going back to the legs. And this time, 
because I want you to be more mobile. I want you to be able to move around, not just condition the legs so you can last longer. And maybe if you need to, throw a low kick, throw a low kick to the side, stomp on their foot. Hello, it's good to see you. But you also have to be leaned out. And anytime you work with the legs, you get leaner faster. Now, I fully understand you might be sitting, and that's, uh, you have to be sitting. You're in a chair or you're just not as mobile. Maybe it's an issue with your uh, wiring. Maybe it's an issue with your structure. You know what I'm talking about. Um, so you can't do it. If you can't do it, don't do it. So that's just the basic bottom line. But if you can move at all and you can get up at all, stand here, take a small step, and then bend a little bit. It's gonna stay in the right hand first. Put the left hand up, start this lunge forward, Small steps, 30 seconds. As soon as you're in, you're back out. As soon as you're in, you're back out. So you're stepping out. So you come in, step out. And these are just to the front. And you're just, again, you're just assisting here with your cane. 30 seconds. Now, we go back to this. And we're gonna do a lot with the chest. We're doing a lot with the arms, a lot with the shoulders, a lot with the core muscles. Because when you defend yourself for real, when you're learning how to fight for self-defense with your cane, you wanna get as strong as you can. If you can stop them with one strike, that's good. If you can hit, if you can move out of the way fast, you can block and you strike, good. The more you strike them, use both canes. There's nothing wrong with that. One in each hand, stepping in, stepping out. Do this one if you can't stand without the canes, do this one in the chair. Step back up, do another set. You know how to modify it. Now, this set, this is gonna give you more of that explosive knockout in the fight, one strike power. And instead of that slow control motion, I'm gonna go one, slow in, two. So you're exploding out. And then as soon as you explode, it comes back in on the count of one or two. One, two, one, two. Out, one, two. Almost messed it up there, right? But you know what I mean. Out, slow in out and again don't worry how many you get done just do this for 30 seconds almost everyone's phone you can see siri alexa whatever you got google map house thing google spot i don't know what they're called echo spot something like that oh that's amazon um give me a 30 second countdown timer i even have a facebook portal if i say it loud enough facebook portal is going to give me a 30 second countdown timer but that's what you want, you want time under tension. Remember that time under tension, that's what gets you stronger. And yes, it's gonna be hard and it's gonna get harder. And that's the point. I want you to struggle. I want this to be a challenge. I want it to hurt a little bit. I don't want you to injure anything, nothing tear, torn or broken. But a little bit of soreness, especially if you haven't felt that in a while and you're feeling sorry for yourself. And I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about somebody who might watch this, might feel sorry for themselves. This is how you get over it. It's not punishing yourself, it's giving yourself something to be proud of, right? So feel it a little bit, put it in the other hand. This hand is up, stepping in that nice, easy lunge. Shallow, not very low first, not very long, but then if it doesn't feel like a challenge, go longer, right? Start to go longer, go deeper. Really, really ignite the muscles, not just in your core, but your legs. You're gonna lean out faster, Get fighting fit faster. Got another set here. This goes around one end. The cane stays in front of your chest. Reach behind. Grab this. I think there's a link below to get these. These are selling out so fast right now, right? Because they closed all the gyms and nobody can work out. But they're so inexpensive to make and inexpensive to buy that they uh, have them in stock pretty fast. It's just a rubber band. It's a big rubber band. And you can buy a really thin one. Start with a thin one, by the way. This is probably the second level, maybe third level or something. I don't know how many pounds of pressure, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need a lot of resistance. You just need time under tension. It doesn't have to be a lot of resistance. So we did that explosive and then slow in, explosive and then slow in. And you're going to finish with a set of 21s. 21s, my favorite kind of workout but they're always finishes. You always do this at the end. So we're going first to the middle. One, two, these are all faster. Three, four, five, six, seven, and then you're gonna go down. 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you got it. They go up. That's your last set of seven. One, two, three, explode. Four, five, six, seven. And that's 21. I want to show you one version real quick because the best way, if someone grabs your cane when you're defending yourself, you have your cane like this and they put their hand right in the middle, the best thing to do is twist it and then shove it down and drive them into the ground. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. So practice, out, turn, in and back. Now, do you see how that popped up and hit me in the neck? I didn't die. That might happen. Just put it back down. Don't worry about it if it does. I've seen that happen when I'm working with you in person and you're like, ah, it's all right. Just get it back down there. You know, every, every guy like me kind of wants to see that too. I don't know, it's stupid, right? It's stupid. It's like, yeah, I probably get shot, stabbed, dead. My kids grow up without a dad, that kind of stuff. Horrible, horrible stuff, but it's always in there. I feel like you do. All right, out and then the other way. I'm always looking for a chance to save the damsel in distress. distress. Not because I need a date, I don't. I, I, far from it, right? I got the perfect situation going. Uh, beautiful wife, beautiful family. But you know what it's, it is? It's just like one of those things where, and maybe it's not a damsel, maybe it's a dude. The dude in distress. Someone's picking on him, beating on him. I'm gonna run up and say, hey man, that's not cool. And they say, what, get out of here, man. You know what I'm saying, all right. Out, we're just gonna let it hit the neck. Out and in, out and in. I think it's because I'm so sweaty. Out and in, out and in. And then do that for about 30 seconds. You need it more. Um, you know, if it's, too much, if it's too easy, do it for a minute. Do it for two minutes. If it's hard, 30 seconds is enough, then just do one set. All right, let's get this out of the way. We'll move the back a little, bag back a little. Let's talk about self-defense. First principle of self-defense, especially with a walking cane, is pay attention to what's happening around you, situational awareness. You're walking out your door. First thing you do, step out of the door, right? You look through the peephole if you need to, but you look out, you look down three to five feet around you in every direction. Is there somebody hiding behind the planter? Is there somebody over there in the corner? Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Is my light off? Is it supposed to be off if it's nighttime? Does someone pop it off or unscrew the bulb? And then you look up out 25 yards to see you know, 50 yards across the street and you go out like that. Situation awareness. Number two, get in a better position when you need to. Now, here's the threat. The threat's in front of me. I want to put the cane between me and the threat, right? From here, put the cane between you and the threat. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Great point. I haven't seen that point, but that's a great point. Cane comes between me and you and then strike. But before you strike, you have to ask yourself a question. What are my targets? If this is the threat, threats between me, or my cane goes between me and my threat, the threat is this tall, his eyes. The question is, what are the targets that you can remove, destroy, disrupt, whatever? The eyesight, if you can remove their eyesight, either their ability to see, or make it blurry or sweaty or some blood in there, that means striking, right? Coming in this way. The eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat, those are all targets that you can remove, destroy, disrupt, disrupt their breathing, their ability to breathe in the moment, their ability to breathe at all. They asphyxiate and die for self-defense. You're defending yourself. But you have to ask yourself, what are the targets? Maybe you come out and it's somebody behind the big planter, right? You live in that nice condo by the beach. You walk outside, you have your cane out of the corner of your eye. Someone's coming up off the ground to attack with a knife, and then your target's gonna be much lower. So you have to know what are your targets before you even think about what technique do you use. Techniques are always secondary. Techniques always come after principles. The principles of self-defense, situational awareness, see it before it happens if you can. Number two, get in a better position when you have to. That means from here, you either step in and you can see when I step in, my body turns and becomes a smaller target. I also put the hard stick, my hard bony uh, arms in front of, in between me and the threat, but mostly between my vital targets 
my soft areas in the threat. So you want to do that. You can step back or you can step in. The other thing that I do is I'm interrupting your line of sight. I'm interrupting your sight picture. If you think about if you're military or you know about shooting, your sight picture for people, especially uh, predators and, and uh, thugs who prey on the weak, who've done it more than one time, they've done it a bunch of times, and they, in their mind, they, it, it almost like feeds this addiction they've got of picking on people and hurting people. And they know what it feels like when someone starts to cower and pull back and, and it, makes it, it ramps them up, right? So now all of a sudden, I interrupt that, that pattern. It's called a pattern interrupt. So I interrupt your pattern, I interrupt your line of sight, and you now have to come around my stick to get in to my vital spot. So if this is the threat, I just put this between me and the threat. He's gotta get around my stick. If he's got a knife, it's better I hit him with the stick than I try to block the knife with my hand. So from here, I'm here, then I strike my targets. So better position, third thing is breath. Always take a breath, the center, calm. Ask yourself, what are my targets? Is it high, is it gonna be in the middle? Are they low? And then after that, you just get to work and you go all in. Number four is a full commitment to all the strikes, full commitment of speed, power, follow through. Follow through is so important. So many people learn how to defend themselves and they punch and they stop, or they kick and they stop, or they strike and they stop. You wanna go through like you're trying to get through their soul to the other side of the universe. With every single strike, everything that's so effective when you use this because it's just a big stick. You can also use this side, which is like a big knuckle. Now you have more force or more area, concentrated force through that area. You're hitting them in the face, you're hitting them in the throat, you're hitting them here, here. Of course, you can also use this to grab. You can use this to lock, to push them to the ground, but we don't wanna focus on all that so much. At the beginning, it's all about these straight or angular strikes, direct strikes is what I was thinking, coming straight in, immediate, direct, explosive. That's how you wanna fight. It's self-defense. Between you and the other person, you're gonna go home let them go home in the ambulance, the body bag, back to the police car. You can fill it in, right? Fill in the blank. All right, let's talk about strikes. The first one, from this position, this is how you practice. You step as if you're walking with your cane. Of course, if you're in a chair, do it from the chair. From here, get in a better position first. If you're sitting, this is the better position. The stick between you and the threat. From here, better position, strike one, comes through, and you saw me pull it back here, it's a habit. Doesn't have to pull back, that adds time, right? From here, just straight, but it's the angle coming across, hitting either like temple, jaw, breaking their jaw, hitting them, the nerves in the neck, breaking the clavicle, they've got that knife, smashing their hands, smashing their elbow, their wrist, all those nerves in there, those thin bones. But from here, that first strike is this angle, from here to here. Cross the body. The second strike is the other way. One, two. The reason I like to put it here is because I want you to see if the ceiling were this tall, you can still strike because it's coming more out, right? That means it's not coming here. If I have to come here, I'm touching the ceiling now. Come here, I get stuck up on the ceiling. Maybe you're in the bus. Maybe you're in a car. Maybe you're on the train. Maybe you took it through TSA and you're on the plane. And some guy, who knows, they go nuts all the time now, right? They always have. Somebody drinking too much, and then you're like, hey man, back up. You can still fight from this position. That's the whole point. But from here, one, other shoulder, two. Just practice 30 seconds, first two angles. If you have a target, but don't practice light. Do the first few light, and then after that, increase as hard as you can. Remember rule number four? It's a follow through. You're trying to go through them to the other side. First two angles, and it's a very hard strike. This thing hits harder than any other weapon that I have in the building. From here, palm facing up. And the reason for this is that you can bring it up this way. And some people say, I've seen, bring it up between their legs and hit them right there because it's so fast and so effective. But when you go so fast and effective, your adrenaline's pumping, 
You go too hard, guy moves, he's not gonna just stand there for most of the point or time. He turns a little bit, now your stick is stuck and you're in the weakest hand position. Coming up this way, peels it right out. Turn your hand this way. Coming up this way, you run into that resistance. He turns a little bit naturally because you hit him in the groin and or hurt or he tried to block it. It's not coming out. You pull it back out, you do a different strike, right? So one, two, pull him up, three, pull him down, four. Four strikes, two, three, four. Practice 30 seconds, two, three, four, one, two. And if you're smart, you'll do both sides. If you're smart and you can, right? If you can't, don't do it. Through three, one. And I'm only kind of joking when I say if you can't, don't do it. Because some people get hung up on that. Well, what if I can't? Now what am I gonna do? Well, don't do it. Do the next thing from here. And then let it go. Three, four. Then horizontal strike. And the horizontal strike, see my palms up. Same reason as this. I bring it through here. And when I bring it back, palm down. Bringing it through there. Practice my back. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hard and fast. Through. You're trying to stop the fight for self-defense with every single strike, every shot. The last one, straight down the middle, right here, right? And if they back up, you're still hitting something. Hit them here, hit them here. Get them right in the nose, break that nose, blood comes out. What's your goal? Number one, situational awareness. Number two, better position. Number three, see that? I wanna uh, disrupt your sight, your sight picture. Three, ask yourself with a breath. What are my targets? That's all you need, just real quick. Where am I gonna hit them? Maybe it's two people, three, four. Maybe it's a group. Maybe it's some animals, a couple of uh, pit bulls off the chain, running the neighborhood, mauling little kids. You're walking with your son, your grandson, your granddaughter, right? Targets constantly change. I'm not picking on pit bulls, but they do get a bad rap for good reason. Anyway, so from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then bring it up just like a rifle. The bayonet strike, bayonet attack from here straight in. It's extremely effective. When you start hitting something, you're gonna feel it. That's that bayonet and then the other side, the other one. Only in self-defense. And you sound, you, uh, just by your comments, Terraria, no, and no offense, you seem like a young guy. You might not have a family yet. You might not have, when I had my kids, let me tell you a true story. There was a person working for me who had just done horrible things for 12 years and I never fired this person. I, got, I had, you know, I had big shoulders, broad shoulders, and I felt like, yes, I know, but I'm trying to help her, I'm kind. I did so many things to help this person. When I had my kid, the moment the child was born, actually before, like when we knew it was coming, right? Yeah, I'll answer that. So you're specific, I just, since I started my story, let me finish it. I see, maybe we're on the, uh, different pages. But the point is, when you have kids and grandkids, something flips in your brain. And anything that threatens them, you wanna threaten it back. I don't care if it's a bully, a punk, a situation in life, an illness they might have. Anything that threatens you, you wanna threaten it back. And then when it comes to your kids, it's magnified by like a million. And you're like, nah, you know, not my kids. I'll destroy them. And that's, that's what I want you to think about self-defense. Self-defense, if it comes to it and you have to defend yourself when you strike as hard and as fast as you can, but it's also follow through. It's that commitment. So many people hit hard and then they bring it back. I want you to hit hard and follow through. If you've ever played baseball, one of my favorite sports growing up, played it so long, you hit that ball and you keep it going. If you golf, you hit that ball and you keep going. Keep your eye on the ball. Same thing when you fight and defend yourself. So many people, and they do this a lot with the open hand stuff, right? They throw punches, bah, 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 and they move in, and they switch, and they switch, and they hit. <laughs> and I'm like, there's nothing behind it. I can't feel you hitting me. It feels like a bunch of little flies dancing around my body, right? When you hit, you wanna bam! You wanna follow through, smash. And so yes, all right, we'll get a hanbo. I don't have any in stock, um, but I'll get one and we'll, we'll do it. All right, now, so we're talking about rifle, uh, uh, what's that, bayonet, and then the rifle butt. It's the same thing on either side, from here, or here, or 
here. Super effective, but let's talk about close quarters combat. Let's talk about you came out of your house, you did everything you were supposed to, but the guy was still lurking. And all of a sudden they're in your face. They're behind your back and they grab you, grab your wrist or whatever. It's all a wrist motion. See that? My wrist. It's so fast, so powerful. It's one of those, like, when you hit it, you're surprised by how hard it hits. And that's because it's gaining all the speed, power, and momentum, and you just let it go back. So they're right behind you. You have this one, or you can grab, you turn into it. Anytime you're being choked or whatever, you turn. You're always gonna turn. Now, there's a right way to turn and a wrong way to turn. You'll figure it out when it starts to happen. You'll go this way and I'll say, uh-uh, I'm getting choked more. And you go this way, all of a sudden you can breathe. There's a reason for that. If I'm getting choked like this and I simply turn my, look at the chicken neck. I turn my head, I'm pushing, you can hear it change my voice and I turn my head and it opens up. It's that simple. There's some of these simple things that you learn in martial arts. The guy behind you, his hands are here. You start to turn your, and then jive it. Just like this, bam, straight through his soul to the other side. That's what you're going for. That's what we're talking about. That commitment to the strike, right? Let's say they're right here. Their hands are on your body. They're on your chest. They're on your face. They're too close for you to hit them with your stick. You bring it up, and then you just pull it down between you, right, and the other person. You rake it along his face if you can. And then you push. Remember all these push-ups we were doing earlier? From here to here, and then bam, just as hard as you can. From here to here, it, it, it gives you all this extra leverage, all this extra power. When it comes in here, and then explosively push. From here to here, push. And then get your distance, and strike, strike, strike. Now let's talk about this. I said, if they get grab your cane right in the middle, your hands are here. You went like this, they grab it. You start pulling really hard. They're stronger. They're faster. They're younger. I don't know. And they grab them. A lot of times your head's not going to be able to move. If you were here in person, I'd put you in the hold and I'd show you how to get out of it. I don't have anybody else here that I can do it with. Um, but I'd show you why your head bop's not going to work. Especially if they know even a little bit what they're doing. You wouldn't be able to hit me with your head bop. That's my point. But there's a right way to get out of it and I'll teach you. As soon as they open us up after the virus, I get somebody in here and I say, hey, can we show this on the video? We'll show you how to do that. All right, so this is this, right? They grabbed in the middle. Now you're fighting back and forth. All the power is going this way right now. What you're going to do is you're gonna go this way, right? Because they're here. And even if they have two hands on it, now you've created leverage against the weakest part of their grip. And when you push it down, your body's not leaning forward. It just goes straight down. From here to here, you are very strong. You're very strong. They're very weak. I don't care how strong they are. They can be the biggest bodybuilder in the world. It can be The Rock. It can be, uh, I don't know, Andre the Giant, if you were still around. From here, you go down here because it's a matter of mechanics. They don't move this way, right? But you understand it because you practiced pushing and turning, pushing and turning. And then you push, turn, and down, push, turn, and down. And when they grab it, immediately turn. Now, if you, and I've never had a situation where I gave my best and the person that I was working with wasn't able to turn my grip. And I do a lot of grip training. So I know from my experience, I fully believe if you turn fast and you go straight down, but again, Almost everybody, the beginning starts to lean into it. Never lean because that leads to losing your balance and going to the ground, ground and pound, elbows to the head, and then you're out. Instead, keep your body straight, stomach up and in always. You should be doing that for good posture. From here, turn, drive. Works either way. Turn, drive. They have one hand and it's here, or the other hand and it's here. This is even better, but they both work exceptionally well but it says fast turn. If um, you want to loosen the grip a little bit, push toward them, or I'm sorry, not push toward, pull back to you, pull back to you, they will pull it back to them instinctively. So you pull, they, you get in that tug, and then push toward them. And then it goes a little bit faster, their pull will loosen just a fraction of a second, and then bam, 
just twist it this way and down as far as hard as you can. When you go down, step in and just drive it. From here, twist down and drive. Now there are all kinds of other things you can do with joint locks, pressure points. We can go over that later, but again, it's like um, Aikido or like the fancy, fancy moves, right? Uh, it's like the, the person who needs to drill a hole into the wall to hang the picture. And they go to Lowe's and they get the most expensive $900 uh, drill. And it does all kinds of fancy stuff. It's got a million attachments. And all they needed to do was just get a, a little bit of a, a, you know, a small drill bit to put the anchor in. And they use it one time. They don't need it after that. This is self-defense. Self-defense is like that. You need this. You need this. You might need this, but you're probably not going to need all of the hooks and all the other cool things you could do here and do here. The guy throws a kick. Your thing goes here, spins him around. All the hop keto uh, cane things that I could show you how to do, I will show you. I promise in person once you learn how first to do the big stuff, which is pay attention, uh, situation awareness, get in a better position, hands up, put your cane between you and the threat, and then when you strike, go all in. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what are my targets? Go all in, know how to defend yourself with the basics. You just need, you need really a, um, a hammer and a nail, bam, and then you put your thing in. Cost two dollars, you already had the hammer, you already had the nail, didn't cost you anything. Don't go buy the $900 drill that takes your temperature and that you can uh, sync to your phone. I mean, you, you know what I'm saying, right? A lot of people do that. They wanna learn all the fancy stuff first. Learn the basics first. What is self-defense? Principles over techniques. You wanna be able to do those things. So much more important than anything else. All right, I gotta get out of here. Thank you so much. There was one other thing we'll, we were gonna do, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.